Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Afi Shafi bin Muhammad Fazli. And today, I our group would like to do some discussion regarding uh, our title, which is uh, the roles of OSH legal requirements in business management. And the second one is the Occupational Safety and Health Act in Malaysia and its Australian features. So uh, let's start our discussion by introducing uh, uh, my participant. Uh, the first participant is uh, Carlton Ratner, which is uh, acts as uh, the first panelist. And the second panelist is uh, Muhammad Nur Shazani. And the third uh, panelist is Daman Ligam Chandra Bose. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the first question that I would like to ask uh, all of you is uh, what is the roles of OSHA? Okay, uh, so I think uh, Gautna has raised uh, his hand. So, Gautna, can you tell me and can you explain further what is the roles of OSHA? Okay, hello everyone. Well, hello. OSHA's professional roles uh, and responsibilities vary by region, but the many the, but they may include uh, assessing working environments, developing, endorsing, and encouraging measurements to prevent injuries and illness, providing OSH information to employers and employees, and the general public performing medic, medical examinations and evaluations, the success of worker health programs. Okay, thank you, Gautna. So mainly, uh, uh, you are explaining the roles of uh, OSH. Uh, so, uh, your explanation is very detailed. So, so the next question that I wanted to ask is, uh, what is uh, OSH responsibility to employees in terms of OSH compliance in work operation? So, anyone can answer that? So, I think the answer for that one. Uh, okay, so first thing first, uh, uh, OSHA's responsibility to employees in terms of OSHA compliance in work operation. So first thing first, uh, occupational uh, health and safety compliance is a standard of meeting, uh, meeting all of the required uh, legal standards stipulated by Occupational Health and Safety Act, uh, Act 85 of 90, 1993. The legal standards stipulated are meant to safeguard and protect the employees in their, in their workplace for any hazards, risk, incidents, or fatalities, and the OSH responsibility to the employees, it shall, shall, be, it shall use safety equipment, personal protective uh, equipment, and other devices and procedures provided or directed by the agency and necessar necessary for the protection. So employees have their rights to report unsafe and unhelpful working conditions to the appropriate of officials. So that's my opinion on it. Okay, thank you. So uh, in terms of uh, the responsibility of employees uh, in their work environment, so there have must have been uh, an emergency management play. So what, what role does emergency manage, management play in ensuring the long-term viability of an organization? I would like to ask uh, Dharma Lingam to answer this. Yeah. Emergency management play in ensuring the long-term viability of an organization. Emergency man managers are prof professionals who are tasked with the responsibility of helping communities and organizations anticipate hazard and vulnerability and undertake measures to more eff effect effect Really deal with disaster. Example, mitigate, prepare for, respond, and recover from them. Prevent fatalities and injuries. Reduce the damage to building, stock, and equipment. Protect the environment and the community. Accelerate the resumption of normal operation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ramalingam, for your explanation. So, uh, as we know, uh, in uh, occupational safety and health, uh, we have an organization and uh, under that, there is employees and employer. 
Uh, so, uh, I want to ask uh, any of you, what is the Occupational Safety Health manages, Management System uh, in the organization and employee participant uh, in the Occupational Safety Health uh, Management uh, uh, System? So, anyone can answer that? I'd like to go for it. Okay, uh, please. Okay, where you see the employer is responsible for occupational safety and health. This is including ensuring that uh, OSH obligations uh, must be account accordance with national laws and regulations. So from this, you can say that the employer must do demonstrate strong leadership and com commitment to the organization's effort, as well as create sufficient preparations for the development of the organization. The system must include uh, the main parts of policy, organization, planning, and implementations, as well as assessment to improve actions. Well, this is divided into multiple categories, which is policy, organizations, planning and implementations, evolutions, and actions for improvement. Well, employee participation participations refers to a in which employees are involved in some way in decision making about safety and health issues in the workplace. This is also a, a part of job of the management should strongly encourage employee to participate because it is at established ownership of safe behavior at the, at the execution level where this is most effective in a way actually. Employee involvement uh, can be numerous, can be taken numerous forms. It could be through participations or through safety circles, which gather uh, on the regular basics in small groups to explore methods to the address safety and health issues. Well, this is on my side. Okay, thank you, Gautam. Uh, so we are done with the first part of our discussion. So I will move on to the second part uh, of our discussion, which is involved Occupational Safety and Health Act, uh, mainly in Malaysia and its salient features. So my question uh, is for the second part of our discussion uh, is, what is a uh, goal of uh, Occupational Health and Safety? Um, hmm. uh, I think we've answered for that one. So. Okay. Please, first, uh, first so for the goal of so for OSHA, that's the main goal of the, for OSHA is to secure the safety and health and welfare of employees at work against any workplace hazards and risk activities involved. Uh, also is also an the requirement of the employer to ensure that there is an effective system in place to uh. The employees participation uh, to ensure the employees participation and a continual improvement in the management of OSH lab. OSH, which are uh, first, which is plan periodic inspection of standard physical and occupational safety facilities and plan on auditing against the place, uh, against the location, systems and the procedures to circuit employment. Uh, the next one is report. The second one is reporting and investigating any incident, all incidents or any incidents that causes injury and damage to the property, and plan some mitigation measures to counter it. And the third one is to prepare and maintain a good working environment, which is based on uh, uh, be, uh, uh, safety, uh, safety and health code of conduct. Uh, to prepare equipment and secure facilities to mitigate disaster safety and health. Uh, the fourth one is to provide the latest information to employees uh, regarding uh, regarding any issues in the company and provide health and safety training adequate to the issues that might happen in the company. Uh, the last one is to review and improve safety, health and the environment uh, from time to time, which is to constantly check the Basically, check the location and everything. So that's for my last part. So I think that's my opinion on the OSH uh, go for 
Okay, thank you, Ashazani. So, mainly you are explaining about the OSH goal in Malaysia. So, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Dharma Lingam, uh, what is Malaysia's Occupational Safety and Health Act in our country? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Okay, can. the Occupational Safety and Health Act is an act which provides the legislation activities framework to secure the safety, health and welfare among all Malaysian workforce and to protect others against risk to safety or health in connection with the activities of person at work. This act was gazetted on 24 February 1994 and may be, may be cited at as the Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994. This act is a practical tools supervised process on existing safety and health legislation. The aims of this act are to secure the safety, health, and welfare to, of person at work against risks to safety or health arising out of activities of person at work to protect person at place of work other than person at work against risk to safety of health arising out of the activities of person at work to promote an occupational environment for person at work which is adapt adapted to their physio physiological and physiological needs to provide and the last one to provide the means whereby the associate occupational safety and health legislation may be progressively replaced by a system of regulation and approved industry codes of practice operating in combination combination with the provision of this act designed to maintain or improve the standards of safety and health. That's all. Okay, thank you, Ramalingam. So mainly, uh, 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 as we could understand, uh, OSH, the OSH is the OSH Act is to protect uh employees and employers from any uh, disaster or any problems, and to ensure that uh, they are in a suitable uh, uh working environment. So uh, I would like to ask uh Gautam, uh, what is the policy statement required for safety and health? In Malaysia. Um, can you repeat the question again? Uh, my question is, what is the policy statements uh, required for safety and health in our country? Oh, okay. Well, the policy statement is required for the safety and health in our country, right? Okay. A health and safety policy uh, statement sets, on, sets out on how you may within your workplace. This demonstrates your business attitude towards arrangements and the system you have in the place to ensure you comply with the health and safety uh, safety regulations. For example, a policy statement regarding smoking in the workplace should include a policy statement headline state why the policy is being implemented and said whether the policy applies to all or only certain areas of the buildings or the or grounds. So in this, uh, you can take an example where there's a dedicated uh, spot in certain areas for smoking zone. So which is uh, far away from combustion uh, materials to avoid uh, burning uh, fire accidents and all. So these are some of the safety and health and safety uh, policies. Thank you. Very good uh, and detailed explanation about uh, the policy. Uh, so I think this is, uh, uh, we are reaching towards the end of our discussion. So for the last question, I would like to ask uh, Shazani. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, from, your, from your experience and and your understanding, what are the responsibilities of employers 
to their employees in a industry or in a working environment? Hmm. In my opinion, uh, I would say uh, employers must provide their employees with a, a place to work, to, to conduct their work, um, and make sure that they actually have access to it, like keys, or make sure they make sure they have like keys to access the locations, uh, basically the locations that say like, uh, let's say like you're inside the uh, CNC company, you need to give the access to the machine later on, with uh, machine or the location of the machine. And the other thing is they also need to provide them with tools, equipments, and other requirements that they need to conduct their work, which is, you know, like equipments, like uh, if you're going to a CNC machine, of course, you need to uh, provide them with any like Allen keys or any Allen keys or any sorts of equipments that can help them to, uh, to conduct their work much more easier. Other than that, uh, I think employers must pay their employees salary uh, and, and the benefits that they have agreed on before they actually conduct the work, which is a contract before you get to work, which is include your vacations, paid holidays or overtimes or any types of other holidays, they should ensure that you actually get their pay on time. And the other than that, the um, employees must make sure that their employees' working conditions are actually in a safe, uh, safe conditions. Uh, so let's say it's like a CNC area. So like, you know, like the meeting, uh, meeting machine or an, for example, let's say it's a meeting machine around the location. You need to make sure that there's not much of a, a lot of health, uh, health and safety hazards around there to make sure that they are safe to work there. Uh, because in some cases, uh, in some cases, uh, employers must give their employers a written notice that their contract, uh, if their contract is about to end, or they are going to be fired or laid off. That one is need to be in advance. They need to give it early, like uh, just early pay something. Uh, also, so that the employees uh, can also play, can also pay them with a sum of money instead of giving the notice. Uh, there are some cases around that. Uh, that I think that happened in Alu Gaj, uh, if I'm mistaken, but I can't remember which company. The, uh, the employees can actually pay, uh, like say they have three months of work, they can just pay the three months of work with cash and then uh, uh, for, for salary and just let them off. And the other thing is uh, inside the contract. Uh, employees also must also treat the employees with expect because because the employees are the one that works with the employers, which provides them even more contracts or anything. And also, they must make sure that the employees, uh, the employees are not harassed or discriminated against by either the employees themselves or by the employees around the area as well. Uh, that's my opinion on it. So basically, um, what I have you explained is, uh, the employers must uh, uh, suffice must uh, suffice uh, and uh, a good environment right for the employees yes. to work and they must uh, understand each other better right uh, yes, so that's a very good uh, yes so there's a good uh, detailed explanation from you okay so we will continue our forum and discussion so uh, this uh, is uh, this uh, this is question I would like to ask about them so do brief a uh, brief uh, on OSHA in Malaysia. Uh, what is the brief, uh, brief on OSHA in Malaysia and its selling features? Okay. There are several things. Let me explain the uh, one step by, uh, one by one. Okay, the first one, the establishment of National Council for Occupational Safety and Health, which is called NC NCOSH. Okay. When you see NCOSH, NCOSH was established in 1995 in accordance in with Section 8 of Occupational Health and Safety Act 1994. Deputy Minister of Human Resources have been appointed as Chairman of NCOSG while the Secretary is composed of uh, Senior of, of Officers of Department of Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, for the second one, uh, the deputy 
delving into the formulate safety and health uh, policy, which is uh, according to section 16, the Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994, OSHA 1994, is, the, is a deputy of the employer or a self-employment person to prepare safety and health policy. Aside from uh, preparing such a policy, they must also update it as often as necessary. The third one, uh, the appointment of safety and a health officer in certain classes of industries. Uh, when you see uh, the appointment of uh, if in uh, 1994, according to the Occupational Safety and Health of uh, 1994, the need of a safety officer was uh, introduced to the comp, uh, to the industry, and this is uh, took place in 20, 22nd August. 1997. Okay, uh, for the fourth one, the establishments of safety and health community at the place. Okay, an inaugural meeting of safety and health community shall be convened by the employer of the place of work. At the inaugural meeting, the employer shall make known his safety and health policies, plans and proposals to establish a safety and healthy working condition at the place of work. For the final one, the use of approved industry codes of practice as evidence of compliance to safety and health previations. The Occupational Safety and Health Act uh, or Act 514 provides the legal, legis, legislative framework for safety, health, and welfare among all Malaysian work, workforce. The principle is to prevent and protect workers against hazards and its risks in connection with, the, with their activities at work. Um, that's all from me. So thank you, Gautam. A uh, very detailed explanation. So uh, at the end note, I think... Uh, 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 each of you have provided a very detailed explanation and very uh, in-depth in -depth, uh, explanation about each of, uh, uh, that each of the questions that uh, 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 I have asked. So uh, thank you uh, for spending uh, our time today. So I would like to thank you, Gautam, for uh, spending uh, the time today to... Uh, to have our uh, to have a forum discussion and thank you to uh, Shazani and thank uh, and thank you also to Drama Lingam. So uh, a final note. Uh, 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 this I hope this forum uh, can benefits a lot of uh, each and uh, every one of us about the OSH Act uh, in Malaysia and its salient features and other importance of it uh, towards uh, many workers in Malaysia. So if uh, you do, if any of you don't have any question or any final thoughts on this, uh, I think this is the end of our forum discussion. Uh, and thank you very much for attending our discussion. So that's all. Mm -hmm.